um, well, what we ended up doing was for the rest of, for the rest of the uh, wow, that's loud, sorry. Um, <laughs> for the for the rest of the uh, issues of the series, we released each one with a photo variant um, of right. an unseen photo of the cast from the set. Um, and these are the two regular covers that Patrick did. And that I don't have this as part of the presentation, but there's one of the the variant cover for issue four is we, which we have at the Famous Monsters American Gothic booth right now is this fantastic image of Marta on the set with the purple llama that was only on set for one day. <laughs> um, oh, and I, I, uh, this is a good opportunity to address uh, that, that comment. One of the things I tried to do with mine, since they're, they're in, in my art, and she'll show you some interior pages here coming up, I can see, I can see ahead. <laughs> um, is uh, we have uh, Dr. Smith dressing up, but not really dressing up, but he's, uh, an alien uh, is sort of uh, looking like Dr. Smith mixed with the uh, Alice in Wonderland characters. So in this situation, he's the uh, caterpillar. Later, we see him as the, the Cheshire Cat and uh, uh, Mad Hatter and other things. And so what I tried to do was to design his outfit not like he really had turned into a caterpillar, but what they would have shown on the show. And I was, I was really trying my hardest to do something where they could have put him in this and then had somebody else with other hands in the suit. And, uh, you know, it's always something where uh, it, it would have hopefully fit right into the series. Well, and what I saw when I saw that, and I hate to bring up this episode, but you know, the vegetable rebellion. I mean, it looks oh. like the carrot. Well, we've got. How could you not bring up that? We've right. got, got a great <laughs> uh, background story that involves the Vegetable Rebellion coming up. So I don't yeah. know if you want to tell it or just get to it. Um. <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's great. Uh, but I, uh, when you show the pictures, sure, yeah. uh, these, these are the interiors of the first uh, issue four, for Patrick's first issue. Yeah, he's, he's got we, we, we've, we've got uh, we've got Will, Penny, the robot. Dr. Smith, all in a cave, uh, sort of reading and, and sitting around talking. Dr. Smith, of course, is playing cards. And uh, the Purple Llama, um, which we mentioned earlier, um, in the, originally in the episode Great Vegetable Rebellion, um, this was supposed to be an actual llama. And they had the actual llama on set for about a day. a day before before Jonathan Harris decided that he wouldn't deal with they, it. With they had piece. figured out how to color in purple. He was a bright purple llama. Yeah, llama. What, 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 did, what did Bill and we say? Said the, the quote of John, from Jonathan was, "Either the llama yeah. goes or I do." Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad the llama went. So yes, I think we're all glad the llama. Probably. Went. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, but, but uh, this, this script was obviously written before they made that change, right. before they made the change to just a man in purple with purple hair. So, um, so they were going to bring that character. Right. Well, oh, to, to loop back just a little bit, if, if I can. So what they ended up doing was replacing him with a person. So if you remember the Great Vegetable Rebellion, that was the guy with the purple hair and the glasses, yeah. Willoughby. And it was funny that when I got the script to do this, I just assumed it was Willoughby, the guy. So wherever you see a llama here, I had drawn that Glasses. character from the Great Vegetable. And then, yeah, okay. and then I think you, 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 you emailed me yeah, and you were like, yeah. it's keep saying llama. Are really <laughs> supposed to draw a llama? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is, this is an original script with the original llama before, yeah. they, had, before they had all the dramatics with, the, with, with yeah. the actual llama. So I think we should just do it with a llama. So I said, okay, llama it is, but I kept the glasses that the character had. And that's the hair of the character <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah, I picked this up last night and started reading, and I was totally lost and wondered, because I had started, what is this, uh, book four? This is, yeah, this is the beginning so of the I, second So I, I was episode. thinking, did they introduce Willoughby in, in issue three, and I missed it? But I, I didn't, there was absolutely no context, and they're talking to this person, this llama, like they, they've been together forever, and... You're doing the script, so if the script starts this way without any context, that's it, yeah, that's not. exactly what it did. Yeah, yeah. It, it had no. It kept saying, kept saying the llama, and so and so I was very confused because I'd seen the episode, and I, I mean, I was familiar with Willoughby, the purple hair mm -hmm. guy, and I was like, wait, that's Willoughby. Why is this Willoughby too? So. Well, that's where I guess I don't remember that episode enough to have have <laughs> yeah. pulled that. Um, Some would connection. consider that fortunate. Okay. 
Is yeah, it, it is well known as one of the worst episodes, yeah. but it's also much beloved for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> is this going to be in a trade paperback? Yes. Do you know when? Um, well, right now, the, the first two issues of the uh, Alice in Wonderland are in stores and comic shops and available online as well. Um, the sixth is coming next month. Okay. Um, and then the month after, or usually two months after, we usually take a month off in between, will be the uh, collected hardcover, just like the Curious Galactics hardcover, which will also have the bonus script pages in the back that the Curious Galactics hardcover has as well. Do you have the Curious Galactics at the booth? We do. Oh, good, okay. Yes. We're right over there afterwards. Absolutely. Well, if you do, we'll run over too, and we can sign your stuff. That would be great. Actually, I'm just around the corner in Artist Alley. If uh, if I'm not okay. there, you can come. And I can happy to sign things. Okay, thank you. What part of part of what I loved about what he did with um, Alice in Wonderland was that um, before they get sort of you know ESQ'd, as they say, off to yeah. this alternate dimension. Um, it's uh, the paneling is very standard comic book paneling, um, which just say it's 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 good and it's easy to follow. But you know, but you know, there's straight lines, <clears throat> comic book panels, typical. And what what Patrick chose to do that I just love is when they ended up in the Alice in Wonderland dimension, um, everything yeah. becomes super psychedelic and sort of super <laughs> yeah. deformed. Um, that's wow. obvi obviously Doctor Smith again as Cheshire as the Cheshire the disembodied Cheshire cat. Um, oh, that's, uh, I changed it to make him blue, so this is <laughs> early coloring, uh, before he was blue. Oh, that's right. And it hasn't got the lettering yet, either. Yeah, okay. no, this is... Oh, some behind-the-scenes stuff there, folks. Yeah, yeah, this, is, this was from my original when I was making that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think this is, the, this is the one I had, so... Is it not a coin, or it looks like first season coloring, the, the light blue and the, the red. Uh, oh, I, I was costumes, or is that just a coincidence? No, it was. It's but it's a it's a takeoff on fourth season coloring. Okay. Uh, her uh, or third season, late third season right. coloring. So her dress, especially, is from uh, they had done some publicity still. It's like it must have been. I don't know for sure exactly, but there's stills of her like from halfway through the third season that I. Uh, and what we learned talking to Angela today was that that was actually a wig, which I was not. Yeah, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, I also stylized her, her little uh, bow that I, I didn't really think looked science fiction-y enough, so it's got this <laughs> science fiction <laughs> thing in her hair. But yeah, uh, now someone who I goes really interesting places that I, that by the end, by the by the third issue, the sixth issue six, obviously that it, it goes to um, it goes to a place that I think you don't really expect while you're reading it because it's so intentionally humorous. And then by the end of it, you real you realize that these, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but the um, the uh, it, it just sort of takes it takes a takes a twist that that makes it more powerful, I think, and more more emotional even amongst the silliness, which is uh, which is really cool, I think. And it just goes to show that Carrie Wilbur is a fantastic writer. <laughs> Um, but you did some great. If I now I will I will heap some praise upon Holly. She really did deliver great scripts to me. Her comic book scripts are unique art, and uh, I really uh, thought they were some of the best I'd ever seen. They just explained oh, things you. really clearly, and it, it just gave me a lot to go on. So yeah, yeah the right funny thing about you there, Holly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> The funny thing about comic scripts is there's no official there's no official format for them like there are for television and movie scripts. Mm -hmm. So you can basically just wing it. I mean, as long as you put a panel description and a dialogue and what the artist is supposed to do, that's the script. So yeah, it just has to hit that sweet spot of uh, explaining enough so that you're not lost as an artist and leaving you enough room to actually be the director. You have a question? Uh, yeah. Um, on the original script that you showed us from uh, Carrie Wilbur, mm -hmm. did you? Um, Use all of the dialogue imported into the comic, or was I started with all of the dialogue? Unfortunately, yeah. due to space constraints in comic books and the fact that you actually That's have what to I have was wondering about. bubbles, it would be so long. Right? Yeah, exactly, and, and they're very talky scripts. Carrie Lieber is a <laughs> yeah. very, you know, right. I was wondering about that. Okay. And, yeah, and uh, I mean, it, it was. I, I I tried to start with all the original dialogue, and what right. I did as I. As I did the thumbnails while I was going through and formatting what it would look like, I realized that not all of that was going to fit, especially because when you're doing the lettering, you have to you have to do the dialogue bubbles in an order that makes sense to the reader, so they know how to read it across the page. Yeah, but you still also have to move the story forward. Too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. the hard job. 
Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. actually a sort of a rule of thumb of about 25, 30 words is the maximum you want to put into a, a word balloon. Per, so once, oh, you get word past, balloon, yeah. once you get past 30 words, you just almost have to go to another balloon. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot you do have to cut out just uh, from that. And you don't want to have too many balloons per panel or page. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, it's it's visual. There's no art. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, obviously, Alice in Wonderland is in public domain. It's an old story, but yep. there's you could go back to the original Tennille drawings or the Walt Disney coloring. Mm -hmm. um, at, was, were you aiming for trying to make your own unique thing, or do you want to be reminiscent of the Disney cartoon? Or I think I specifically uh, told you to make Queen of Hearts not like the not Disney. Not like Disney, and I, I took that for the rest of it too. I tried to stay away from Disney as for much as legal possible. reasons or just for creative. Just for creative reasons. Just to look, yeah, yeah, to give it our so own. Like like, although, although I did, uh, I did go back to the Tennille drawings in some respects for some of the characters. Um, uh, I'm a big. Alice in Wonderland fan. I've I've got a lot, of, and they didn't even know this when they came to me with the script. I said, "Did you not? Do you know? <laughs> let me tell you what a big Alice fan I am." And uh, I've I've got uh, uh, there, there's two different uh, annotated Alice volumes. There's mm -hmm. the, the original Martin Gardner, and then the second one that he did. And I've got both of those, and I've got uh, the reproduction of the original uh, uh, Lewis Carroll. Illustrated book. I've got all this stuff. I think I, <laughs> well, yeah, I, think I ended up putting a bunch into the script actually, because because I, I was talking about my my tendency to Google imagery while I'm while I'm writing because I because I, I want to have some reference and yet I can't draw for the artist and so I think I ended up Googling a bunch of um a bunch of Alice in Wonderland different different illustrations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I what I definitely did not use what I didn't use anything from the Disney. Thank you. At all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Did you refer to Erwin Allen's production of Alice in Wonderland? I, uh, I, did I didn't. Not. I didn't even know that existed. Neither so. did I. <laughs> so yes, we did. Late, <laughs> late seventies, early eighties. He did a TV production, and the girl from Poltergeist mm -hmm. was Alice in Wonderland, and it was an all-star cast. Yeah, Heather O'Rourke. I can't believe I never heard of that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so no, I can it's say no. It was a it was a TV movie. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's available on Warner Brothers Home Video, and I've got some of the original promotional <laughs> material that went out when I was in syndication. Wow, wow! I am utterly stunned. I never heard of that. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be going back to Rick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, we're going back to the question. It was just uh, uh, in in some respects, there's a bit of Tennille in it, but it was mostly just my idea of what Wonderland might look like. Yeah, this this oh. this slide is actually. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No, I'm just gonna ask Patrick. Just when, when I'm looking at it, I just I see the season three color palette all yeah. over the place. Yeah. I mean, is, wasn't that really the? Isn't that really the guide? I mean, yeah. Well, the, for the color palette, absolutely. Yeah, for the, the color in the, in fact in the first three issues too, and in this one, uh, I was asked specifically. Uh, I, I, I turned in my first few pages, and Phil said the only note is, you know, keep it looking like the show. I think that was from Phil. I, don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I just think that the Alice... <laughs> the I get the TV mixed up so much. Yeah. Just the <laughs> Alice stuff seems to fit so nicely with that palette anyway. I mean, just it Yeah, natural. It, it wasn't exactly. natural. Right. But, but they, they definitely wanted to stick with the, uh, you know, bright, technicolor look of the TV show. and. Uh, you know, I, I was happy to do that. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty good with bright colors. And well, the, yeah, I, when I put this slide together, it was originally to uh, talk about likeness, uh, character likeness, and uh, which I think Patrick did a great job yeah, with. No. Because um, when when people when people when you, when you license a comic book property like this, what you're doing is you're trying to trying to give people what they have not gotten originally from the show, except in comic book form. And you can do that because it's just art. You're not, you're not going back to the actors or anything like that. You're just you're you're taking a moment in time and you're freezing it and you're getting them more. And so so getting 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 the actors license, getting, getting the actors likeness. Sorry, not license. Excuse me. <laughs> um, from that particular era is really important. I think I think Patrick did a great job. Thank you. Most That's of the retros don't do that. Yeah. It's uh, not actually my strongest point, so I have to kind of sweat over that. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a teaser of uh, the cover of issue six that is coming out next month. And will that have variants? 
Uh, there's a photo variant for that as well. Yes, um, I believe it, it I, don't, I don't have it on this presentation, but it's, the variant is going to be Dr. Smith in a purple velvet suit. Uh, the, uh, teapot, the teapot's a good example now. Uh, Holly brought the teapot into the uh, issue number four, my first issue, and I just, I, love the I fell in love with them too. We, we all love the teapot. But that was a case where, uh, you know, uh, Disney has a famous movie with, a, with an animated teapot. teapot. <laughs> and so my uh, challenge to myself was, let's do an animated teapot that doesn't look anything at all like Disney's. And <laughs> so that's why he's tall and it somehow looks more male. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that was a lot of fun. And then the picture I did sort of in a NCYF uh, style of the painting. NCYF? Uh, NCYF, he's a uh, uh, <coughs> golden age of uh, illustrators, 1910s oh. and 20s. Yeah, it's just a, an old uh, illustrator from kind of that era that I wanted to emulate. Wow. I like that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah. And he's playing the game there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what, what is, yeah. What's that game? Uh, Croquet. Croquet. Croquet, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, play they're every not day. actually playing croquet. In uh, it's actually sure play. Yeah. 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 It's like either croquet or, uh, croquet. or cricket in England. Yeah. Every day. Whether they want to or not. Croquet is actually much less exciting than this drawing, actually. <laughs> I love croquet. I play it all the time, but it's, it's very... That, uh, that, I, I, I looked up a, a golfer doing you, a golf swing. You don't swing, you don't swing your croquet bat like that. Or you might put something inside. But it's a simplistic game that they would play. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's in the book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was in, it was in Again, the Again, a perfect match. Right. You know, it just, yeah. seemed, just, it just seemed natural. It'd be funny if the robot was playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was another thing we had a lot of fun, of, a lot of fun yeah. with, was giving the robot um, expressions um, that, that went beyond because... because um, that would be hard. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, not facial expressions, yeah, obviously, yeah. But, but, you know, it's something that, you, that, that, that is... He sort of developed a personality yeah. in the show, in yeah. a way. He had a lot of the punchlines by the third season. Yeah. yeah, and he has a lot of punchlines in here, too, as well. Yeah. And, and, but we also sort of, like, I asked... I asked Patrick because there's there's one scene where, where he gets he gets sort of like projected by Will. Will is like you know we don't have time for your sense of humor, yeah. <laughs> and 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 in the yeah. script, I think the original script actually said the robot is dejected. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I don't know, maybe oh, wow, okay, Patrick, I'm gonna leave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I did the oh, 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 oh. yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. It's a full fledged character. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, while we're talking about fun upcoming stuff. I thought I'd uh, <clears throat> thought I'd go back to the uh, early innovation comics from the '90s. Um, please pardon the terrible scam the left, um, which were actually uh, many of which were actually written by Paul and me. Um, and uh, we uh, we may or may not be in the process of reprinting Voyage to the Bottom of the Soul from Innovation. Um, that is a project we've been approached with, and we are down with it. Um, it's it's re always exciting to me to reprint something, especially from comics, that's no longer available. And it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a unique story. It's 12 issues, I think, I want to say. And which and which is a very very long very it's a, it's it's long for for a, for a comic series, but um, but it's very it's very unique. I think is the best way to describe yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I would I, I, that's why I'm, I'm sorry, Bill Mooney isn't here. I couldn't make it, but I would love to hear his perspective on writing it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'll make that's something that I will have to talk to him about mm -hmm. and put as bonus material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 uh, that's our that's our. <laughs> A forthcoming uh, plan project, actually, the, the, the one we've talked about. Um, I've also, um, we've also heard about many other supposedly lost scripts, as well as uh, as well as Bill Mooney's, Mooney's own um, episode script um, that was that was uh, done as a table read in um, the extras um, there, and then we've had um, some requests to uh, to make that into a comic as well. Um, but none of, the, none of none of that is actually set in stone, I mean, we're, we're still, we're going to finish these series, and, and we're going to make them as, as good as we can, and we're probably going to reprint this one, and whatever comes next is really up to Kevin Burns and the licensor, and what they want to do with the, with the, with the license, but, I mean, if somebody, if somebody 
came to me again and said, adapt these, I, I'd be like, uh, yes, more. For it, yeah. so, I am so, I know. So it's fun to do. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are, are you guys happy with the sales? That's what I was going to ask. Same I have thing. no idea. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what we're asking. Uh, yeah. well, yes, um, losses, it, as, as you may or may not know, uh, comic books are not blockbusters. Right. Um, they they are the source of many blockbusters, um, but the books themselves uh, are, are moderate sellers, and you know it's 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 you have a you have a, a smaller audience. Um, but when we when we got the Lost in Space license, we were really optimistic, and I and I'm happy to say that the that the each issue of Lost in Space with the covers combined sells about four times as many copies as any of our other series. American wow, cool. Which which is just which is just right. a it's just a, a statement to how many fans there still are, which right. is awesome. Right. I hope Cameron Birds knows that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he does. He does. He yeah. Does. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 been really great. Yeah. Every time you know we'll get the num you get the numbers back from a comic series you're doing, and then comics are really a labor of love. Like nobody's in comics to make millions of dollars. <laughs> um, so oh, okay. so it's. <laughs> Sorry. Hundreds. <laughs> Tens of dollars. Tens, Tens of dollars. dollars. <laughs> uh, so real cheeseburger money. <laughs> so you, you know, you, you do all these original properties and all these all these stories that you're really proud of and you and you get people to buy them and that's awesome. Um, when you get the numbers back, you're like, oh. but that's part of what's been doing, what's so great about doing a series like this is that every time I get the order numbers in, I'm just like, Yes, yes, yes. So it's been very rewarding in that in that in that in terms sense. of rewards. <laughs> yes. Well, indirectly. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, this is just uh, basically uh -huh. a call to action. Um, <laughs> we're going to be over, we're over famous <laughs> monsters. We're going to be over famous monsters, which is also the American Gothic Press booth. And we've got uh, we've got hardcovers of Curious Galactics, as well as both variants of issues four and five of Alice in Wonderland. And we would love to sign them for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, six okay. comes out next month. Six comes out next month, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much.